Hello friends, welcome back to our SSJS dev series. In this video, we will see where in Marketing Cloud can we write SSJS code. These are some of the most common areas in Marketing Cloud where you will use SSJS. Uh, first one would be in landing pages under Web Studio. Uh, second, you can try it in email or SMS messages under email or mobile studio. And finally, in script activities under Automation Studio. Now let's take a look at each of these First, we'll look at landing pages under the Web Studio. So I'm right now in the Cloud Pages section. Um, and you will see this is a collection that I've created. It's the SSGS Dev Series. So under a collection, you can go and create multiple resources like landing pages, code resource, etc. Right. So you can create a landing page. Um, so this is just like a web page. So you can give it a name. So let's say SSGS Test. And then um, I would prefer to use the classic editor because you have more uh, control over like you know what you can edit. Uh, the content builder is much newer. You will be able to like drag and drop in components if you want. Uh, but just for trying out SSJS, like you know using a regular editor, the classic editor is like fine. And then once you click uh, next, um, again I would choose the code view because then you have direct access to the code. Uh, the design view is more of like the layout where you can bring in components. You probably have to drag in an HTML component and then edit within that. So if you just want to try out uh, SSJS, I would definitely use the code view, right? So I've already created one here. So I'll go ahead and open that up in the landing pages. So when I open a, a classic editor code view, this is what it will look like. It'll first load just the HTML, and then you can go ahead and paste your script block that we saw in the previous video. Um, so here I've just given a few sample uh, SSJS lines here. So you can see the platform.response.write, that's a platform function uh, to output a string that I have. So this will actually output hello world using platform function. And then uh, this is how we load the, the core library as we've seen before. So b using this core library, I can now directly access the write function and then uh, output that as well. So it says hello world using core function. Now for testing uh, the SSJS uh, for a landing page, you can use the, the preview option right here. So when you click on preview, if it works fine, you will see the output. Um, if there's a problem, then it might just keep uh, you know, timing out. So you will, you will see that nothing gets returned. Uh, so let me show you that. So let's say I comment out the core library. So this write function is no longer valid. So if I do a preview, you will just see the, the timer keeps like going on and on. Um, so uh, it doesn't return. So if you are actually trying out SSJS code preview, uh, and if you see nothing's being returned uh, after a few seconds uh, when you're expecting some value back. Um, so that means like you know, there's some error in the code. So it doesn't give you a proper error message unless you have a try catch statement or, or you're, you're catching the error somehow. Okay. So keep that in mind. Like you know, if you see this happening uh, for a long time, that means there's some problem in the code and you have to go in back and, and check that. So if I change this back now, it should work fine. So if I go and preview will show me both the outputs using the platform and the core function okay so this is just a sample uh, you know the script block that I wrote but in your actual script block you will have more detailed code on, on SSJS now there is the option to go ahead and save and publish the landing page so if you save and publish it it will it'll get published and then you will get a link so if I click on that link uh, you can directly access this page uh, the only problem with uh, using this editor and the the publish page when you want to like you know, check uh, is that if I make a change, uh, let's say I make this change here after publish. And let me go ahead and save and publish this. In the preview, you will see the change reflecting immediately, right? Uh, but then uh, the when I try to go and check that in the direct URL, if I click here, you will see the change is not reflected. So this is because it takes about a uh, few minutes like you know, for it to reflect after you have published the changes and this can get quite frustrating for developers because we keep changing uh, you know code we keep testing it out and if there's an issue we need to fix it and then we need to go and and try it out so it takes every time that you publish the changes and you want to check it you have to wait about five minutes before the changes get reflected and that's quite um, quite frustrating for us developers right so there is a workaround for this which we'll definitely cover in our next video so please do check that out um, but this is just how you actually would want to like you know uh, if you're if you're writing SSJS code in a landing page this is how you would do it uh, I usually use the preview option here uh, to try and see like you know what's the result 
um, and then uh, if I wanted like in a user publish page um, I use the workaround option which we will discuss in the next video okay so the next one uh, let's look at email uh, so this is a you know, this is email studio that I have I've created a sample email here and if we go to the content so under content you can see like you know we can usually get the the HTML and by the way this is an HTML email so I can go ahead and and modify the content in the the HTML section here so I've again I've written a script block uh, for SSJS uh, the code is very similar to what we saw in the in the cloud page or the landing page right so again we have written the the platform function to output hello world and also the core function now as you may remember uh, core functions are not used in uh, messaging context is for non message context like landing pages or script activities but there are definitely few core functions that do work so write is one of them um, so if we do this we should be able to see both the outputs working okay and I've also declared a variable here called SSJS var uh, just to show you like you know how we can use them uh, using the inline SSJS tags so so we learned that in the in the previous section uh, if we look at uh, these uh, values here like the control field is to like you know bring out the attributes of a particular subscriber um, and or if it's a data extension uh, in this case it's a sendable data extension field uh, or if I directly want to access this variable here I can use as a control var tag or if I want to evaluate something like so now that I have this test data if I want to show it as uppercase I can show that using the eval tag as well okay so I'll go ahead and preview here and then you will see how that comes across so this is a data extension that I'm using and as you can see these are the subscriber attributes for this particular uh, subscriber um, and when I cycle through you should be seeing the you know the values change these are coming from the data extension that you see here uh, and this one is the temporary variable and the uppercase is automatically showing up here as well so this is how you can use um, you know SSS this is just a basic sample of how you use you know the the control tags in line uh, or if you want to like an you know, output using SSJS or you know use some of the SSJS functions in an email uh, how would you actually do it okay the last one uh, is the script activities with an automation studio so as you can see here under automation studio if you go to activities there is one for script um, if this is not enabled for you you can ask the support team to enable that for you um, so under the scripts you can go ahead and create uh, an activity here uh, if you say script here and then you click next you can give a name and then you can type in your SSGS code so script activities only support SSGS there is however a workaround to use AMP script but that's a very roundabout way of doing it uh, preferably always use SSGS for uh, script activities okay so I have one that I created here uh, a while back um, and as you can see this is a little detailed one where I'm using a bunch of data extensions and the subscriber list so uh, this is how the you know the code will look like you know once you write all that out um, and then how do you use that so if I go to the automation studio workflows I can create a new automation um, I can schedule uh, the automation and then pull in the script activity uh, I can choose the script activity that we created okay and you can confirm like you know are things working uh, and then go ahead click done uh, you can save it and then you can go ahead and schedule it okay now this is pretty useful if you want to uh, like you know run uh, any programmatic um, automation in the background um, and then like you know it'll you'll provide output uh, for you um, in, like you know, into a data extension uh, don't expect any uh, user um, you know interaction for for such processes like you know so if you want certain updates to happen in the background without any uh, manual intervention then this is the best way to do it um, and you can actually log the output of um, you know the the execution into another DE um, if you want to see like you know how the process of how it runs or if there's any error so there's definitely best practices when you run script activities which we will cover in, a, in future videos as well okay uh, I've also have a previous video on script activity in automation studio um, on my channel so I will share the link to that in the description so if you want to get more details of how to create a script activity you can definitely check that out okay our slide so uh, that's all we had uh, for this video folks uh, please do subscribe for further updates and thank you for watching